Hi everybody. I'd like to welcome you first and foremost to the lab section for 311, Experimental Psychology. Uh, my name is Kevin Rosales and I'll be your instructor for the remainder of the quarter. As I stated in previous emails, this is a challenging, interesting, and weird quarter because all of the campus community has shifted to an online format for both teaching and learning uh, coursework. So just please bear with me throughout the remainder of the quarter. I promise I'll do my best to make the lab section as smooth as possible. Um, so I just want to make sure that you feel welcome, that you feel like, you know, you can ask questions and just walk with me on this journey um, to learn about how to write for uh, the scientific community. Um, so this PowerPoint here is a generic welcome PowerPoint that all the instructors will be using to sort of just welcome you guys as a whole and make sure that you guys feel uh, ready and ease some of the anxiety associated with taking the class. So welcome. Um, in terms of my expectations, some of this stuff has been recycled throughout the quarter so obviously some of these things will not be applicable because of our online format here so of course attendance right is not um really a thing for us being that you guys will be accessing these youtube lectures on your own uh, you won't have to show up physically anywhere uh, neither will you have to show up virtually anywhere because i have opted out of the zoom platform for the numerous reasons and complications that have come up recently so I thought that just recording um, pre-recording myself and just uploading that one might be a better way of teaching the course um, but I'll talk a bit more on that later um, in terms of being prepared right so the APA manual seventh edition is necessary um, and of course most of the other stuff um, doesn't really apply except for the laptop and things of that sort, okay? Um, drafts are a huge component to this section. Good drafts lead to good final papers. So I highly, highly suggest that as we build up knowledge, build up the content and get to the point where you guys are turning in drafts, that you guys turn in the most complete drafts possible. Drafts are not nearly as close to being worth the same as the final papers are. So please do not be afraid to make mistakes. Mistakes are necessary for us to become better writers and get over those obstacles that um, sort of prevent us from being the best writers that we can be. So just make sure that you turn in your drafts and try to turn in solid drafts, polished drafts. Um, but once again, with the idea that mistakes will happen and that that's the whole point of drafts for me to give you feedback, uh, constructive criticism, so on and so forth before you turn in your final draft. So drafts are incredibly important for this lab section and do not take them lightly just because they are called drafts they are ultimately the building blocks to the final paper and skipping these or not doing your best on these will significantly uh, impact your grade uh, and the last one asking questions so i know that we're not physically meeting neither are we virtually meeting but for this lab section um, as I stated before, email will be the primary form of communication. So any question that you may have, please do not hesitate to shoot me an email. Um, in the subject line of the email, just please go ahead and state that you are a Psych 311 student and then proceed with the email just so I know um, who it's coming from. Uh, but please just keep in mind that you can always ask questions about anything related to the course or anything else for that matter. So why are we doing this? Many students who don't plan on being involved in research uh, often graduate and get frustrated because they are required to take the class. Um, personally, I have to say that 
as I went through my own CSUSB academic experience. So I too am a Coyote alumni and took the class myself about six years ago. So um, at the time, I wasn't so clear on how this class could help me because at the time I did not know that I wanted to go into a research related career. Um, at the end of the day, it's really about keeping your options open and accumulating as many tools as you can under your belt. And this class is an incredibly useful tool for really anything that you'll go into. So consider this question. Anyone can ask their neighbor how to fix their problems, but they come to you. Why? Because you have the research and knowledge to back your advice up. Um, this is an incredibly huge tool of knowledge. Um, the way that you'll start to think and the way that you will be thinking by the end of the quarter is unlike anything that you've experienced before. Um, really, you're forced to think in scientific terms and be able to be clear about your thoughts, complete about your thoughts, concise about your thoughts, and think about things or think through issues via a scientific lens, which is often um, necessary throughout many situations. So just keep that in mind as you are learning through this course that it may not be something that you think you might need now, but even if you don't go into a research related career, thinking like a scientist is incredibly beneficial. You just have a much more logical and thoughtful, rational mind compared to, to other minds that may not get the training the training that you will in this course so as it says here even if you plan on an applied career you will have to in one way or another consume research be able to read research digest it and apply it to your professional practice whether it it, it, be, it involves becoming a clinician becoming a school psychologist becoming a teacher becoming you know a social worker any of these professions require the professional him, him or herself to be able to digest research and apply it and not just apply it but apply it correctly and you know learning to read research is one of the tools that you'll gain in this course and will be something that will follow you and help you hopefully throughout the rest of your professional journeys um I often, as an undergrad, would read a research article, and as soon as I would get to the method and results, just completely skip over it and not even take one glance at, at these two sections, mainly because I thought that they were irrelevant, that they were not as important, and mainly because a lot of the statistics I just did not understand at the time. And that's completely okay. And that's completely okay for this course as well. But I do have to say that by the end of the course, you will know how to evaluate a method section. You will know how to write a method section. You will know how to read result sections and write result sections. So having these opportunities to do so in this class will make you a much better consumer of research compared to those who just skip over methods and results for the important reason that sometimes as peer-reviewed as research can be or even stuff that you hear out there that may not be peer-reviewed sometimes the claims are not merited by the methodology neither by the results Sometimes researchers claim A, but in reality, they should be claiming B. But you wouldn't know that unless you went and strictly evaluated the methods and the results to see if what the methods and results are saying do give rise to the conclusions that the researchers are giving or not. So because of this, it's very important for us to, to make sure that that we understand and gain some knowledge about 
how to evaluate these sections. Uh, more importantly also is to be able to consider limitations and the discussion of research, meaning what does it all mean, right? You might get to the bottom of an article throughout the class and you think, well, now what? Why is this important? The discussion sections of these papers are designed to answer just that, you know, people lay out the problem, lay out the research question, provide an explanation of the methodology, explain the results, but at the end of the day, why is all of this useful? So going through these discussion sections, understanding how to pick what we need um, is also another tool that we'll, that we'll gain. Um, so maybe you can think of other examples of when people have come to you um, as a psychology major and said, why is my kid throwing tantrums? Why is my kid, you know, not eating right? Why is my kid um, spending so much time on social media? How is social media impacting um, my child or other children for that matter? Um, how can I help, you know, people avoid drug use and drug abuse and alcohol and substance abuse? All of these questions are empirical questions. Thus, your answers should be empirically based. And it is your job as a college student and as a future professional to be able to know what the research out there actually is. You don't want a parent walking away with the wrong information. And because of that inaccurate information, doing things that are harmful to the child or not the best um, way of you know dealing with the situation. Um, and you can only give empirically based information if you know the empirical studies themselves or in other words you know the research so you know just take a second to think of a few examples as to when a family member a friend might have come to you um you know the psychologist in the family and asked to you know give some explanation of why things work the way they do um all right so moving forward what does having a BA mean? What is the whole point of a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology? Um, well, first of all, one, all of you by now or shortly might be completing your general ed courses. General ed courses, right, are classes outside of your major. Um, things like math, right, English, chemistry, biology, at some point you might have taken a class similar or those exact same classes, right? Um, so why does this happen? Why is this a requirement? Well, mainly because we want to make sure that as psych majors, you guys get a well-rounded education. Um, because once you get to courses like this, you'll be able to understand from multiple perspectives why people behave the way that they do, why the mind works the way that it does and how does the mind impact behavior um, which is the central question of psychology to try and understand the processes that underlie behavior and we can only know that if we know how our field fits within the broader societal uh, or at the broader societal level so just having a lot of knowledge um, or a little bit of a lot of knowledge does help you make, does help you be a more well-rounded um, student and future professional. And lastly, maybe not so much now, but research is fun. Um, even saying that might sort of trigger some of your uh, minds to, to maybe laugh a little bit and think of this as a joke, but for some of you, right? Uh, you might learn to like and enjoy research, um, at least personally. I know that there was a point in my time where I never, ever in a thousand years would I have guessed or even predicted that I would have become a researcher um, or do research at all. 
So just a little bit about myself. I am a graduate student at Claremont Graduate University. I'm in the PhD in Applied Cognitive Psychology program. In our program, we study a lot of um, control processes, so things like attention, um, memory system, so we study short-term memory and working memory, intelligence, and more importantly, we study how variation in working memory, variation in intelligence, impacts real-world performance. So what do I mean by that? So we understand how people who have higher levels or, lo or lower levels of working memory perform in school. So is your GPA dependent on your level of memory, right? Is you know how you perform out in the workplace dependent on your IQ score? So we're looking at the predictive validity or real world impact of variation in these cognitive abilities. And that's in a nutshell what our lab and what myself um, look at in terms of um, research within cognitive psychology. So um, I find it interesting. I find it um, just incredible how research can really shape the world today. Um, so just keep in mind that research can become fun right, if you find how it is relevant to yourself. So as we walk on this um, journey to learn scientific writing throughout, you know, this whole process will sort of elicit um, some thoughts into your mind to try to get you to think about how research can impact your, your own personal life and the lives of others. Okay, so that is it for this welcome PowerPoint. Uh, now we will go ahead and jump into the syllabus and um, just to start off, um, this syllabus is probably the most tentative syllabus that you might ever receive, especially because or mainly because of um, the current situation. So at any point, um, either because of a technological issue or something related um, things might have to change i might have to push some topics around i might have to um, maybe modify a couple of assignments so on and so forth just bear with me this is new for all of us um, so your patience and understanding is greatly uh, appreciated all right so like i said my name is kevin rosales um, this is my email here, so if you ever want to reach me uh, with any questions, any concerns, um, you just want clarification on something, please email me to this email here, so kevin.rosales at csusb.edu, and like I mentioned before, in the subject line of your email, please be sure to state that you are a 311 lab student, just so I know who it's coming from and you know how to how to approach it um so this first chunk here is just to let you know that um this quarter will be filled with new challenges that i've never faced before that you've never faced before um things will go wrong um people will make mistakes including myself of course probably the one who will be making the most mistakes but that it is totally okay um we'll go over it together you know I'll find the issues to any problems that might, might arise um and what's important is that we're just both very understanding both on your end and on my end of the current situation but i do promise that i will keep constant communication right so this first bullet point here throughout the whole way um when things go wrong i'll let you know when things are going smooth i'll let you know um, anything having to do with deadlines, assignments, and so on and so forth, of course, I'll keep you updated. Um, but this syllabus is very detailed in nature. It provides everything that you need to know for all of the assignments. Um, it gives a very good understanding of what's expected of you, um, how you can earn 
certain grades in the course and be able to you know sort of keep up with the work so just keep that keep that up um, um, I completely understand that you may be um, unambiguous in terms of what to expect frustrated scared or just plain out irritated trust me I feel that way too I am still a student myself so the same problems that you're dealing with as a student I am dealing with as well so just know that I will do my best so that anxiety decreases so that everything is just um, operating in the smoothest way possible you know so things stay calm and um, try to prevent chaos as much as, as possible all right so very importantly this last bullet point here I'm personally interested in teaching not so much grading I know that as a student and being a student myself the grade is really what we care about it really is what drives our motivation for the most part and really in the syllabus most of you may just skip down to the assignments and to look at you know what everything's worth and so on and so forth to determine whether you, this class is this lab is doable um, I'd like to sort of say that that's a natural mindset to have but don't let grading get in the way of your learning a lot of the times when we're focused plainly and simply on learning on grading or on the grade we sort of tend to lose focus of what's really important and that's the learning process um, really it's no good if you get an A and you forget everything by the end of the quarter or you don't carry these skills forward to society it's not really important that you get an A in the lab what's really important is that you're able to help other people by what you learn in this lab to be a contributing member to society so just go ahead and keep that in mind as we um, work through the lab grades are important I do my utmost um, effort to make sure that uh, grades are always up to date and so on and so forth but don't make that the primary um, matter in this lab focus on learning the process of writing and becoming better writers and then the grader will come afterwards all right so just very broadly this lab class will expose you to the scientific process of writing specifically writing for psychology um, you'll be able to learn how to write a manuscript for publication how to conduct research okay, how to evaluate it and most importantly how to critically think about the research that we're doing so like I said before all of these are important skills to have um, going forward in both your career at CSUSB and even afterwards um, as you enter the workforce all right so you can go ahead and read through these learning objectives on your own I'll go ahead and just um, skip over these mainly because they are tied into the general objective of the course um, so skipping down to the required text yes the APA manual is an absolute requirement um, more specifically though the seventh edition is incredibly important and is the only APA manual that you should rent or buy this is so because the sixth edition is significantly different to the seventh edition there are changes in the seventh edition that both substantially and technically change how you write a manuscript so please do not write your papers based off of the sixth edition of the APA manual a lot of the guidelines APA style APA formatting will be based only on the seventh edition of the APA manual so make sure that you get the seventh edition all right blackboard will be your best friend along with your email um, as I've done already I've posted this syllabus on blackboard so please be sure to always be looking at the syllabus making sure that you're staying on top of deadlines assignments so on and so forth 
um, I will have separate folders on Blackboard containing handouts, containing APA related materials, containing materials for paper one, materials for paper two, um, and other relevant information that I think might be useful to you guys uh, to be successful in the course. So please be sure to check Blackboard daily, check your email daily, uh, just so you know that you know, you're staying on top of things. All right, moving down here. Um, my lectures will be posted on YouTube. Um, the channel is titled CSUSB Spring 2020. These are pre-recorded voice recordings. Um, and as I promised, I explain a little bit more in terms of why I chose not to go the Zoom way. Um, as many of you might have heard, Zoom is having a lot of security issues with people hacking into live classroom sessions, um, unstable internet connections, and other problems very similar to those in which the learning process is negatively affected. So because of that, I decided to just avoid as many of those issues as I could, not saying that there's no issues with using YouTube, but um, at least there are a few benefits of this teaching format, mainly that if for some reason you're having any sort of internet connection problem, um, the YouTube lectures will be there permanently. So you can access the lectures when you can on your own time. Um, but of course, keeping up to date following the schedule on this, um, you know, at the bottom of the syllabus and so on and so forth. Two, we avoid the issue with people uh, hacking into our conversations and, you know, things of that sort. So because of that, we will not be formally meeting, um, going live with each other, none of that stuff, um, simply because I feel like a lot of problems might arise and might take away from your learning experience. So, um, this is the, the method that I have selected, and hopefully um, it'll work, and we'll see throughout the quarter if that is in fact the case. All right, so your grade, uh, very important. In order to pass the course, you must earn at least a 60% of the total lecture points and at least 60% of the total lab section points. Failing to do so regardless of the total number of points you earn in the section, will result in a failing final grade for the course. So just make sure that you keep up to date with your assignments, that you're always putting in constant effort, being diligent, careful about what you do, asking questions, and you won't have to worry about not passing the course. Um, the lab is worth a total of 500 points. Okay. And the breakdown per assignment is the following. So we'll have activities throughout the lab that I'll be posting on Blackboard. Those together are worth 40 points. We'll have a library assignment that I'll be talking about in later lectures worth 20 points. There is an APA quiz in this lab course, and there has been for many years now, ever since I started taking, ever since I took it and beyond that as well, in which you'll be tested um, on content that is within the seventh edition of the APA manual, which is another reason for why you should get the manual because this APA quiz is worth a good chunk of the points and you need to study that manual to be able to do well in the quiz. Having said that though, we will have a review session or I'll be posting a review session on YouTube going over what you need to know um, or what you should know to be able to do well in the quiz. All right, and then we have drafts for paper one, drafts for paper two, final paper one and final paper two okay each with their assigned points there and adding up all of these things together we are at a maximum total possible points of 500 points all right very important each assignment will be graded on completeness which is why i say when you are turning in a draft make sure that you turn in as complete of a draft as you can do not settle for turning in a one paragraph, two paragraph, you know, draft, um, because yes, you will get some points, but you'll get very minimal points. And it won't help you for your final paper because 
drafts are really the only opportunity for you guys to get feedback from me formally um, to make sure that you give me more so I can give you more feedback. Uh, very important, each assignment is due by the end of the day on the day which it is assigned. So drafts have their due dates, final papers have their due dates, um, and more importantly, late submissions are not accepted. Okay? However, you can always turn in early, early submissions. Um, so from here on out, a lot of the stuff I will be coming back to in other lectures. So for example, the information that you need to complete the library assignment is in this syllabus. So make sure that when you're getting ready to start this assignment that you come back to the section of the syllabus. Um, and just really quick, this syllabus compared to syllabi for other courses is probably more of a friend than other syllabi for other courses, mainly because there's so much information in the syllabus that you'll need to know and constantly be looking at, right? This is not the syllabus that you look at only on the first day of class and you're done with it, no. The syllabus contains plenty of information that you'll need for both upcoming assignments and assignments coming down uh, later on. So please be sure to always look at the syllabus if you have questions about anything. Um, it's probably the case that any answers you're looking for are in this syllabus. All right, APA quiz um, information for that is here. Just know that that will be taking place May 14th. Um, so just go ahead and write that in your calendar. Um, we will have two experiments. Um, we will conduct those experiments as a, cl as a class. Um, each experiment will culminate in an individual research paper, so that's important. The research papers you turn in in this class are not turned in as a group. Everybody will turn in a paper individually. There are 21 of you in the class. Therefore, I should be receiving 21 papers um, on the day that those final papers are due. I should be receiving 21 drafts and so on and so forth. So just because we collect data as a class does not mean that you will write the paper as a class. Each paper will be written individually. Um, you are required to engage in the data collection process. Um, I will give you, of course, more information on that as we get closer to those dates. So for us, we will be collecting data on the 14th and on the 5th of May. So April 14th, coming up soon, we will be collecting data for experiment one, and we will be collecting data for experiment two on May 5th. All right. Um, so the research papers themselves um, must be written in APA style. The first few lectures are heavily focused on APA style. You'll get some of that today. Um, this includes typed, referenced, or guided by the 7th edition of the APA manual, um, and so on and so forth. Just keep that in mind. Um, a lot of this info I'll skip over now and I'll come back to later just because um, uh, this is very relevant to once we start actually turning in drafts and turning in final papers. All right, but just know that information for drafts and for final papers is present here in the syllabus. All right, very important. I do have to talk about turnitin.com. So turnitin is a software that is responsible for analyzing documents that you or I turn in and looking at how similar those documents are to other papers or resources that exist on the internet. So as you'll hear about in just a second, um, we use this to make sure that nobody is plagiarizing their work during the, um, during the lab. So please make sure that you are avoiding plagiarism. We'll talk about you know about it and how to do that um, shortly. But just keep in mind that you will have to turn in your final papers through Turnitin, and um, that system will check for the amount of plagiarism that exists. 
right? Um, late assignments, um, or at least late final papers, um, will be docked points, and the number of points depends on how late the final papers are. So you can just look at that breakdown here. So for example, if you turn in paper one two days late, okay, you will be deducted of total 15% or 22 and a half points, okay? If you turn in paper two late, okay, and it's one day late, then you'll get docked 20 points, okay? So before you turn in a paper late or before you procrastinate, make sure that you look at these percentages and hopefully that keeps you away from turning anything late. I've had students in the past who have gotten 93s, 96 on their papers but have turned their papers in late and they get nothing higher than the 70, 72%, 65%. So even though this may seem like a little bit, um, please do not take this lightly. Do not think that you have the luxury of losing points. So just make sure that you're staying on top of things, that you're not procrastinating, that you're you know, consistently knocking things out of the way so you turn in your, your assignments on time, all right? Um, email is the primary form of communication, as I stated earlier in a previous email. Please make it a habit to check your email daily. Please make sure that you're constantly up with Blackboard because my form of communication with you guys is through email. So just to make sure that you're always checking and making sure that you're not missing anything that may be coming from my lab section or for even from your other classes, especially given that, you know, this is an online course. So just keep that in mind. All right. Um, plagiarism. Just once again, quick spiel here. Um, we'll jump into that in just a second. There is tutoring available for this class. Um, importantly, there is virtual tutoring going on. So if you would like to set up a virtual tutoring appointment with the writing lab, um, please make sure to just copy and paste this link to your browser and make sure to follow that so you know where to go and that you get the, the information that you need. All right. And we have the course timeline finally. So the rest of the syllabus is the timeline in terms of what to expect um, throughout the course. So for today, Tuesday, um, we will um, be simply going over the syllabus as I just as I just did now. I'll talk about a few handouts that you have access to. Um, plagiarism, ethics, okay, and there are two documents that are due today um, as you listen to this lecture. The first one is the plagiarism contract, which is very simple. You'll know how to um, satisfy that in just a second, and if this is your second time or third time or whatever time, uh, taking 311, I'm going to need you to fill out a form and send that to me by email, okay? So this is the agenda for today. We are now done going over the syllabus. So we'll move on to um, some lecture, and, um, and that'll be a wrap for today. So let's go ahead and first talk about the plagiarism contract. So the plagiarism contract is available at the end of the syllabus so please make sure to scroll down to that now okay you will suffice this contract by simply maintaining your enrollment in the class so i'll go ahead and read this out loud um, plagiarism is the use and presentation of another person's words or ideas as if they were your own this includes any handouts distributed to the class, a published author, or a fellow student. For example, borrowing a classmate's paper to help you understand a topic and then retyping your classmate's abstract methods and refer references and turning it in as your own work. In this example, both students would be guilty of plagiarism, even if the student who loaned you, loaned you the paper had no knowledge of your plagiarism. 
plagiarism is not permitted in this class and the consequences for plagiarism will be swift and harsh okay first enough for the entire course of psych 311 and your professor okay meaning your lecture uh, professor will actively seek the strongest disciplinary action possible by the department of psychology and the university by remaining enrolled in this course I am agreeing to the plagiarism contract and agree to avoid plagiarizing. So you technically don't have to fill anything out. You will be signing this contract simply by remaining in the course. Okay. Um, on top of that, I just have to make clear that these consequences are not made up by myself. These consequences are true for every other lab section in 3.11. And these um, disciplinary consequences were made by the um, lecture professor. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you are not taking 311 again, so if you're not retaking it, this is not pertinent to you. But for those of you who might be taking retaking 311, um, go ahead and do the following. Um, just go ahead and fill out the answers to the following questions here. Okay. Once these things are typed up, just go ahead and send them to me in an email. So you can answer the questions on your syllabus, then copy and paste them onto an email, and that will be perfectly fine. I just simply need to know um, that you are taking 311 so I can figure out the best way to help you. Okay, so with this, we have satisfied the two um, assignments that are due today. Once again, if you are not retaking 311, that is not pertinent to you. If this is your first time taking 311, all you have to worry about is the plagiarism contract. And even that is also simple. So just by maintaining uh, or by remaining in the course, um, you will have uh, satisfied that, that item. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to the next topic. Um, we will now go ahead and look over okay ethics all right so with this i want you guys to go ahead and just follow along this powerpoint is posted in on blackboard Okay, you'll find it under APA materials. Uh, the PowerPoint itself is titled APA Ethics. So if you want, you can go ahead and pause this video while you go ahead and download that off of Blackboard. Um, once you have downloaded it, just go ahead and come back to it and follow along with me. All right. So ethics are incredibly important in psychology. Um, I myself am part of a, of a IRB committee, which is a committee that is responsible for approving research studies on campus. I am part of the IRB committee, committee at Claremont Graduate University, so we are looking at um, tons of research uh, applications, figuring out whether what these researchers are proposing to do is ethical um, and can be done. Um, so that is, this is why I think personally that ethics are really important to know about. Um, so just go ahead and make sure that you keep this in mind. Um, it is our duty as psychologists okay, to increase the scientific and professional knowledge of behavior and people's understanding of themselves and others. Okay? That is our goal. But we have to achieve this goal in an ethically sound way meaning that we respect and protect the civil and human rights okay, of people and the central importance of freedom of inquiry and expression in research, teaching, and publication. So we achieve the first bullet point by adhering to the second. Okay? Um, we strive to help public, um, the public in developing informed judgments and choices concerning human behavior and so on and so forth. So it is our duty to serve people in these various contexts um, via an ethical way. Okay? The ethics code provides a common set of principles and standards upon which psychologists build a professional and scientific work. All right. So what are these principles? Okay. 
First, we have the first principle, principle A, which is beneficence and non-maleficence. So, meaning that we strive to look at the risks and benefits associated with any given research project. Will this research project provide more benefits than risks? And are the risks minimal enough to be able to move forward and conduct the study? Okay. We're always seeking to avoid harm. Um, there are principles both for humans and for non-humans. We will focus here just on the uh, human uh, area of things. All right. Principle B is fidelity and responsibility. So we have a duty to the people that we serve. Uh, we have a responsibility to them to establish relationships of trust in which the participants themselves can trust what we're doing as experts and not have this negative stigma that scientists, you know, sort of go behind people's backs and do, you know, evil scientist type things and so on and so forth, as there tends to be that sort of stigma now. Um, we have to be aware that we have to be professional as possible um, with participants, with the community, and with ourselves. Um, and we hold, okay, we uphold the most professional standards in terms of conduct, um, responsibility, managing conflict, so on and so forth. Okay. Principle C is the principle of integrity. So psychologists seek to promote accuracy, honesty, truthfulness in science. As you've heard before, there are plenty of researchers that have violated this principle by either fabricating their data, making up their experiments, um, lying about their findings, so on and so forth. So um, make sure that you know that in this course and in really any area of your academic or professional life, integrity should be always and consistently held. We then have the principle of justice. So this promises fairness and justice, right, to all people, regardless, okay, of their previous backgrounds. Um, this means that with any processes, procedures, and services that are being conducted, that we always do things in a fair manner. All right, principle E. This is respect for people's rights and dignity. So meaning that all people deserve to be treated um, as individuals. Everybody has some form of unique traits or characteristics to them. And therefore we treat people as they are. Okay, we respect people's privacy, con confidentiality, okay, and self-determination. Um, we do not um, judge people or treat people differently based on cultural oral differences, um, age, gender, gender identity, um, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, and so on and so forth. Okay. All right, so these are the principles by which psychologists adhere to. Um, and just know that there is or there are ethical standards that we have to follow both in this class and moving forward. All right, so now moving on to the next but very important topic is of informed consent and debriefing. So, the informed consent. These are forms, either virtual or physical forms, that are given to participants the moment that they walk into a research project. The informed consent allows the opportunity for the participant to decide out of his or her own free will whether they want to participate in the current study. This tackles the problem that was present many, many years ago in which people were forced to take part of studies simply because they had no other choice. Um, providing an informed consent acknowledges that people are autonomous and they are free to make their own conscious decisions. 
So for both of the projects that we will be doing in this course, we will provide informed consents for those participants to make sure that they don't feel like they have to participate in something against their own free will. Right. Um, there are several components of an informed consent, um, but before I get into this, just know that you will not have to write your own informed consent. This is mainly for your own knowledge. Um, we will not be um, spending too much time on this. This might be the only time that I talk about informed consents in this much of a detail, so just bear with me. Um, all informed consents possess the following components. So informed consents are given okay, to people and they contain the following. Part one, they provide an appropriate explanation of okay, the project. Okay, that's one. Um, in addition to that, uh, there are some types of people who are not able to provide consent. Okay. So in that case, we would seek individuals assent um, and so on and so forth. All right. So just know that these are um, characteristics of informed consents. All right. Um, let's go ahead and skip through this. Um, so now on this slide, you'll see an example of an informed consent. Um, contains all the necessary components, so an explanation of the study, what the people will be exposed to, what will gain as a function of carrying out the study, how the person may or may not benefit from the study, contact information, and just in case they have more questions about the study, they want to know more, um, in case they want to report any issues that they might have had, um, and of course, a opportunity to sign the informed consent just in case, you know, or once they have agreed to participate or not participate. Debriefing, incredibly important. We will have debriefing forms at the end of both projects. Um, this is just an opportunity for the psychologist to explain the purpose of the study, to tell the participant more in detail about what they just experienced, what the hypotheses were, what the goals of the research are, and so on and so forth. I personally take this as a learning opportunity. Um, it's also good practice for myself to consistently be talking about the purpose of my research. It helps me grasp what I'm doing better. And it just and it allows for a conversation between you and the participant. Up to that point, they're sort of just doing everything, you know, that you're kind of telling them to do. Um, and I think this just serves as a learning experience for both you and the participant. Um, so incredibly important piece of the research process. All right. So um, this is an example debrief form. So just on your own time, you can go ahead and read through this just to kind of get an idea for what they are. Um, but like I said, we will be passing out debrief forms to our participants as well um, for the two projects that we'll be uh, conducting in this class. All right, so that handles the ethics component of today's lecture. Okay, so you can go ahead and exit out of this. I will now go ahead and open up Okay, the next form or the next topic that we'll be talking about, this will be the plagiarism part of this lecture. So just please go ahead and on Blackboard, you will see a handout. So this will be in the handout section of Blackboard, a document titled, um, Plagiarism Revised 2020. So just make sure that you do go ahead and open up that um, document. All right, we'll be going over most of this, not every single thing in detail, but I need to make sure that you guys have an idea of what plagiarism is, but more importantly, that you need to avoid it. There is no excusable justification for any plagiarism that comes about. All right. 
So plagiarism is defined by the honor console document as the act of passing off as one's own um, ideas or writings of another. So make sure that whether you change one or two words or anything like that, that you know that that does still count as plagiarism. Um, acting like if somebody else's ideas are yours or the products of other people are yours um, is what plagiarism is characterized by. Um, plagiarism constitutes academic dishonesty, so it is unethical and illegal. Okay, um, Plagiarism includes, but not limited to, pre presenting someone else's ideas or data as if they were your own, using somebody else's language without quotation marks and citation, paraphrasing by borrowing someone else's grammatical structure or phrases, this one is especially important because people think that just because they switch around a few words, switch around some sentences, that they're avoiding plagiarism. That is not the case. Keeping the structure and grammatical phrases and so on and so forth um, still remains um, as plagiarism. Handing in someone's, someone else's work as if they were your own. Submitting identical or highly similar papers to multiple courses without instructor knowledge and approval. All right. So you may not turn in a chunk or even a paragraph from previous papers into or incorporate those works into the papers that we'll be writing in this class. These papers should be completely new and should not contain any of your own work from previous courses. So please keep that in mind. All right. So here we have a few examples um, of information okay, that is available on the internet and how to correctly okay, cite the source of your information. So if you're citing this chunk of information above, okay, it says here, when in your writing you refer to information gained from the passage, you will need to provide an in-text citation and complete information on the reference passage. That is the, on the reference page, I'm sorry, just as the following. So Calcutta is a good example of a city where urban disorganization is being threatened because of a rapidly increasing population. These cities are technologically static, economically backward, and impose intolerable social strains and hideous costs under individual citizens. Okay, so at the end of this, they provide a citation. Okay, what you have to keep in mind, and I strongly encourage you to do so, is to read through this passage, paraphrase it yourself, as they've done here, and get into the habit of looking at examples of good paraphrasing. This paraphrase here is perfect. It does not in any way okay, mimic the grammatical structure or, you know, sentences as, you know, from, from, from the original um, writings. Okay, they paraphrase in such a way that they're able to suck out the main point of the passage. And even though they are using their own complete words, um, they still cite. So citation and citing and paraphrasing is incredibly um, important for our own um, projects here. Okay, so as you'll see, the rest of the document is on um, other examples. So what I encourage you to do is either to pause the video and um, look at the document. Um, yourself and make sure that you go through each one of these examples just so you have um, a better idea of what it means to paraphrase and how to cite. We will be talking more about citing in future lectures. Um, so even if it's not completely clear now, just start to get an idea for what is expected. Um, and then here I like that um, the author of this document has erroneous justifications for plagiarizing, um, meaning that these reasons are not reasons for why you think you didn't plagiarize. Okay. 
So just keep that in mind. All right. So at the end of the towards the end of the document, you'll see examples of plagiarism. Okay. So this is what you should be avoiding. Okay. So keep this in mind. It's important to know examples of what plagiarism is in addition to what um, non-plagiarized work looks like. And this document has it all. And then at the end, just some very helpful tips for avoiding plagiarism. So I'll go through some of these now. So number one, don't wait until the last minute to write a research paper or essay. Okay. Students often make the careless mistake of cramming last minute, meaning that what you're more likely to cram is people's exact wording. And that's problematic. So if you leave the paper to the last minute, you're not gonna have enough time to think of your own way of saying things because you lack time therefore that will lead you to plagiarize um, instead of that just make sure that you get plenty of time or you get plenty of time to be able to write out your drafts write out your final papers and so on and so forth okay let's go to number four so learn the appropriate ways to document sources such as mla apa or turabian uh, we only care about apa in this course so just make sure that once I go over the lectures on how to document or cite sources that you are doing it correctly because incorrectly citing counts as plagiarism. All right. Um, let's see. Let's pick one more. Let's go ahead to number three. So take careful and accurate notes while doing research. This is very important. We can't remember everything all the time. Um, there's times where we forget things or times where we misremember things and we might say things that didn't happen. Um, or we might include ideas from other people, not remembering that those ideas were from other people. And we end up writing those ideas on our own papers. And then that leads to plagiarism. So just make sure that you're always careful about how you take notes about what you take notes of and that you clearly indicate in your notes that any ideas that may have come to mind are you know products of other people and that you correctly remember to cite those all right so um we're gonna go ahead and do this plagiarism activity next time um i'm gonna give you some time first to be able to go through this document um, look at the examples of do's and don'ts and for next time be ready for our first uh, class activity this will be graded okay so just make sure that you do read um, this document in its entirety and be ready for um, the plagiarism activity that will be done on Thursday All right and will be due on Thursday as well okay all right so let's go ahead and um, exit this okay so you can go ahead and close this down all right so up to this point we've talked about the syllabus okay we've talked about a few handouts we've talked about plagiarism okay we've talked about ethics okay. so with this in mind i would sort of like to close today's session for next time um, we will start talking about APA formatting and all of that stuff. Um, but for today, I kind of just wanted to give you a very introductory um, lesson in terms of the basics of conducting research, which means uh, ethics and avoiding plagiarism and so on and so forth. Very important was going over the syllabus. It's probably your Bible for the rest of the lab, so make sure to always go back to it read it make sure you're on top of stuff um so now that we got some of that stuff out of the way um for the next class we'll go ahead and start talking about apa style what does it mean to write in an apa format or in an apa manner um the principles that we sort of have to keep in mind as we write um and this is a handout that is already on blackboard so you can start looking at it now um, there will be a powerpoint attached to this that is also 
on Blackboard. So just make sure that you that you know that that is there. We'll be, go, be going over both of these materials on Thursday, okay, um, in great extent. In addition to that, we'll be talking about the title page for experiment one and the methodology for experiment one, okay. In addition to that, on Thursday, what is due is library tutorial one, okay. So let's just go ahead and scroll up, okay, in the syllabus to make sure that we catch that, just so you know how you turn in these library tutorials. Okay, so there are three library tutorials that you will need to turn in. The first one is already due on Thursday, so just please make sure that between now and Thursday you complete it. Okay, the link to the tutorials, okay, is here, okay, or there is a more step-by-step -step process in terms of how to access that. Um, basically, these are tutorials helping you understand how to navigate um, the library resources online. Um, at the end of each tutorial, you will be presented with the quiz that you'll have to complete. Your tutorial is only valid if you pass the quiz with a score of 80% or greater. Okay, if not, the tutorial will not be accepted. You can retake the tutorials or the quizzes, I'm sorry, uh, for a higher score. Uh, but just know that you have to get an 80% or higher on the quizzes to be able to turn in a valid tutorial certificate. Okay. Once you pass the quiz, you'll be presented with a certificate. Your job is just to um, upload it to Blackboard. So I'll show you. There will be um, an opportunity for you guys to upload those tutorials on Blackboard. You can either take a picture of the of the certificate with your phone and then send you know email the picture to yourself and upload it to blackboard you can screenshot okay the certificate and do the same um, either way is, is fine as long as i see your name and the score itself um, i will open up um, folders for you guys to be able to upload those on blackboard okay so just make sure that you complete the first tutorial um, by thursday um, tutorials two and three will be due um, later on after that. So a week from today, library tutorial number two will be due. And a week from Thursday, library tutorial number three will be due. And those are all sort of following the same format. Okay, So they all have quizzes. And then all you have to get an 80% or higher, take a picture, screenshot, upload that to Blackboard, and you will be good to go. Okay, So just make sure that um, you read through the handouts that we went over today make sure you have a clear idea of what we talked about and then complete the library tutorial by thursday okay uh, for thursday like i said be ready to discuss or to learn about the apa guidelines we'll talk about apa style and so on and so forth in addition to going over the title and method section of the first paper okay if at any point you have questions beyond okay, what I've talked about today or related to anything that I've talked about today, please go ahead and email me. I will gladly respond to your email within 24 hours. Um, if not, okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this first lecture. A lot of dry material, but trust me, it'll get more interesting as we go. We sort of have to get some of this simple and basic stuff out of the way first before we move on to the to the meaty part of this class. Uh, but for now, um, just go ahead and stay motivated, stay safe. And if you have any questions, please email me. Okay, have a good rest of your day.